Okay, I think we'll begin. Good afternoon, everyone, and good evening to our uh, German speakers, and uh, good morning to anyone uh, in a different time zone uh, other than the East Coast here. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Succeed in Germany's Healthcare Market, our webinar with the focus on business opportunities in digital healthcare. I'm Omar Oweis, the Director of Investor Consulting at Germany Trade Invest in the Washington, D.C. office. And I have the privilege of moderating uh, today's webinar. We have an uh, interesting and uh, excellent lineup of speakers for you guys, and an interesting webinar ahead of you. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. You may already be familiar with this uh, website. Um, it's our dedicated webinar series website. Um, the overall series titled, of course, Succeed in Germany's Healthcare Markets. Um, you either signed up through this or received uh, notifications via email or LinkedIn. Um, what is unique about this website, as you see the URL at the top, Succeed in German Healthcare, uh, separated by dashes, um, is that it lists all the webinars we've done. Um, we launched the series uh, just about a year ago, last December, and we uh, had a focus on the German healthcare market as well as the medtech industry. Uh, we've discussed reimbursement procedures in Germany in April. We've had a uh, bioregions and biotech-focused webinar in June. Uh, last month, we did one on uh, the aging society and the demographic uh, challenges to healthcare. And of course, today you've joined us for the business opportunities in digital healthcare, and we're very excited that you're here. Um, digital healthcare, or or e-health, um, I guess the, the umbrella uh, term as I'm using, um, really encompasses a lot of different subsegments, as you're all aware. Um, whether it's uh, health IT, M Health, telemedicine, I think we'd all agree it's it's a very dynamic industry. It's uh, multifaceted and uh, uh, for lack of a, a better expression, and forgive me for the cliche, but it's really no longer a future trend because the future very much is now. Uh, digital healthcare is um, is here to stay. It's already prevalent and in practice in uh, in major healthcare markets globally, uh, including the U.S. and Germany, of course, uh, just to name a few. Um, however, with with every industry, um, there come levels of complexity and. Uh, e-health or connected health is uh, is not exempt. Uh, there are reimbursement concerns, there's uh, legality of use issues, safety and security concerns, uh, just to name a few examples. Um, helping me address this uh, this timely topic uh, are three excellent speakers. Um, first will be Ms. Julia Rühle from uh, Germany Trade and Invest. Um, her focus will be, or her title of her presentation will really be the overall growth market e-health. She'll be followed by Mr. Sebastian Zilch, uh, the German Association of Health IT Vendors, is his association. Um, and his title uh, is German Health IT Markets and Their Characteristics. And last but not least, we have an American speaker as well, Mr. Brad Tridel uh, from Vitaphone eHealth Solutions USA. Um, he will highlight uh, how Vitaphone innovates across borders, uh, Germany and the US, um, their, two main, uh, their two main hubs for Vitaphone. I do want to make you aware that there is a um, Q&A session, of course, following the three presentations at the end of this webinar. Um, and you can use your uh, webinar toolbar. Uh, there's a chat or question feature. Um, and feel free to use that throughout the webinar. You will not interfere or interrupt with the presenters at any point. Um, I will be able to see those questions you post. And we hope to, uh, to address them all if time permits. At this point, as the moderator, I just want to take a quick poll to see who um, in the audience has joined us. Um, you should be able to see the poll at this point. Um, really, we just want to know um, in which e-health sectors your company operates. Um, you have a couple of choices here, um, mHealth, telemedicine, health IT, data record management, um, or of course other. Uh, you can select one, you can select multiple. Um, and forgive me if, if one of your answers of uh, one of the answers is not there. Um, if that's not the case, then please just select other. Um, I'll give you guys a few seconds to uh, manipulate the poll. And I'll close it in just a just a few seconds now. Probably five more seconds. Great. We'll go ahead and close that at this point. Thank you for your feedback. All right. Um, before we begin, I just want to give you a quick overview of our agency, uh, just so you know who we are and refresh your memory. Um, Germany Trade and Invest is the foreign trade and inward investment promotion seat of Germany. Um, we do a lot of different things, a lot of different events, a lot of different webinars. 
but in a nutshell, really, um, you know, the takeaway is that we help international companies establish business operations in Germany. We provide uh, services and publications, um, all free of charge, um, and these individual consulting services typically um, consist of market and industry reports, whether it's the digital healthcare uh, industry mm -hmm. that you're interested in, um, or automotive, or aerospace. Um, a lot of our clients ask about uh, market entry uh, analysis, uh, barriers and challenges they may face, um, and try to set up a best strategy for it. Tax and legal information is another major question we get. Um, you know, how does tax and legal in Germany differ from their home base, their home country? Uh, we try to connect you with uh, the appropriate partners um, and find available fun funding and financing, and uh, try to help you find the most appropriate site in Germany. That's the site selection service we provide as well. Again, just a quick snapshot of, uh, of some of our publications in hard copy. They're in hard copy or in uh, PDF uh, format off of our website, different industries again. And again, services and publications completely free of charge to our customers and our clients. So we're a great resource uh, for Germany. All right, but I know you did not uh, uh, dial in just to hear me speak, so let's begin with the program. Um, our first speaker, uh, Ms. Uh, Julia Rühle, or Julia Rühle from uh, Germany Trade Invest, our Berlin headquarters. Uh, she's a manager of investor consulting, uh, dedicated to the chemicals and healthcare team, and she is also our digital healthcare or e-health expert. So at this point, I would like Julia to have the rights so that she can give her presentation. Okay, thank you, Omar. Thank you, Julia. I hear you loud and clear, and I see your presentation. Go ahead. Okay. Just a second, let me start my presentation. Stay with me. <laughs> I guess you see a black screen now. Yeah, well, your presentation was there, now it's a black screen, but I'm sure it'll, it'll pop up again. So. Yeah. This is new. Let me take the rights. Well, there, there, there it is. It's there. It's just the PDF doesn't seem to be wanting to open. Okay. You can take back, back the rights, see. and I just let me take uh, the back. Yeah, we'll just try to do I that one more time. Open it again. Okay. Okay. All right. Bear with us one second, please. Apologize for the technical hiccup. All right, Julia. We're going to give it a, give it a shot again. Let's see. And here we go. It's not working. Not cooperating. Point. Let me try, let me try something else. Okay. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Of course, when the day comes, <laughs> something, something has to keep it interesting. So, all right, Julia. Why don't we, Sebastian? If you're ready, maybe we can transfer over to you, um, if that's okay. And then, Julia, I think it, it, I think it's a computer issue. I think for some reason, yeah, it's a bit frozen. I, yeah, so, I guess I have to restart um, everything. Why don't we do that? So, yeah, Sebastian, great. Do that, I please. will yep. hand that over to you if that's okay with you. Sure, go for it. All right. All right. I hear you and see you. Go for it. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Omar. And uh, I hope, Julia, you're going to fix your technical problems. So let me start to talk about the German health IT markets and their characteristics. 
I'm responsible for governmental affairs and strategic networking at the German Association of Health IT Vendors. And um, what I'll do now in this presentation is, first of all, I'll, I'll uh, present to you my association and the CONHET. Then I'll dive into health IT in Germany, uh, continue with health information exchange infrastructure and also the challenges for health IT in Germany. Um, before coming to an end and giving you a little outlook on what's going to come next. So the German Association of Healthcare IT Vendors represents all leading providers of health IT in Germany. Our 53 members cover a market share of about 90%, including inpatient and outpatient care. Our members include big international players as well as small and medium-sized companies. 70% of member companies are acting internationally, and most of these have international representations. Although smaller in size and much younger, we are comparable to HIMSS in the US. During the years, we've become an established partner for the government, the German self-administration, and their institutions, as well as other organizations or associations in the health IT scene. Although our focus is on Germany, the last years, the European Union and other European countries, but also the United States, have become increasingly important for us. For example, we do study trips, which is planned for next year to go to Chicago and San Francisco to uh, learn from the U.S. system. Now, our goals are to influence the political agenda, to set new incentives and standards, to promote the health IT sector, and also to foster knowledge on health IT. This is just for you to have a look on uh, later. It's a list of all of our member companies. Yeah, not, not much to talk about there. And uh, now the CONHET, Connecting Healthcare IT. This is Europe's biggest industry event in health IT. It was launched in 2008 by the BVITG, which is the abbreviation of uh, German Association of Health IT Vendors. Um, some facts on CONHET this year. We had uh, about 360 exhibitors from 14 countries and 6,500 visitors from 65 countries. And there were also a lot of sessions going on um, uh, along the four pillars, Congress, Academy, Networking, and um, Industry Fair. Next year's content will be in, on these dates in Berlin. Um, the, theme is the theme is going to be Shaping the Future with Health IT. And if you're looking for more information, feel free to click on this link later on when you have the presentation. Now, Health IT in Germany. So Germany is a quite digitalized country in terms of Health IT, as almost 100% of medical practices and hospitals use IT. Um, this does not mean, though, that it's uh, fully digitalized and there's still a lot of paper business going on. You can also see that when you look at the hospital budget and uh, the market volume, it's especially compared to the U.S., relatively small. Uh, only about 1.5 to 2 percent of the expenditures of the budgets um, of the hospitals goes to health IT. And the overall market volume is about 1.31 billion U.S. dollars. There are about 200 vendors of health IT in Germany, and um, you have this, the numbers here. Um, when you divide them into practice IS, hospital information system, and also specialized solutions. The result of having um, so many vendors on the German market is that numerous different sets of communication standards exist, and they have trouble communicating uh, among each other oftentimes. So, let me talk about health information exchange infrastructure. The telematics infrastructure in Germany has been envisioned to be the basis for the digitalization of the German health IT market. Its establishment has been mandated by law and is closely tied to the eHealth card. The idea at the time was to establish a secure connection between all actors in healthcare. So far, however, only a small friction of possible solutions have been realized. This is despite the fact that several applications are explicitly listed in the laws, for example, e-prescriptions. Ultimately, the worth of the telematics platform will be determined by the applications that will run on the platform. 
Um, we'll see what's going to happen next year as the nationwide rollout is expected early 2015. Now some more facts and figures. Um, looking at these results from the survey of the German Medical Association shows um, that there is demand for health IT among physicians. Um, and this is important as the development of new applications will obviously be driven by the demands of patients and doctors. Um, right. The uh, German Doctors Association asked which applications would entail the greatest improvement. And you can see that it's electronic storage of emergency data, electronic letter of referral, and electronic drug therapy safety assessments. The BVITG also conducted a survey among physicians in 2012. And um, according to these results, physicians think that the internet will increase in, rele in relevance, especially for the exchange of medical results with colleagues, knowledge sharing and learning, as well as the development of physician networks and home page design. Even though there is demand for it, there are several challenges attached. For one, um, the Gematic as the main institution being responsible for implementing the telematics platform needs reform. The current structure of this institution does not foster a quick agreement as its stakeholders, this is representatives from physicians organizations and health insurance funds, have different, oftentimes conflicting interests. Furthermore, important aspects of future applications, such as requirements, specifications, or certification of these apps, are still open and need to be fixed. There is no predictable environment for vendors to develop business cases, as some IT solutions are just not reimbursed in Germany at the moment. Here, we will need a change in politics. Provision of care has to become more integrated and patient-centered. Also, we argue, as an association, that doctors need to be reimbursed for investing into innov innovative health IT. Looking at interoperability in Germany, one can say that we have many regional, sectoral, and application-based flagship projects with innovative IT solutions and networks. Julia uh, will show you a map on this later. However, we do not have nationwide interoperability between all vendor solutions yet, and approaches are frequently not transferable. Further, there is no national institution with the authority to set standards in Germany. And for nationwide interoper interoperability, we need to agree upon one set of standards. Data security is a really important topic in Germany, and there's no way around that if you, if you want to uh, get involved on the German market. There's no nationwide reporting system in Germany, and it is unlikely, due to political as well as structural reasons, that there will ever be one. This generally holds true for central data collection, with few exceptions. And this is due to German history. Now, to come to an end, health IT is an innovative, growing market in Germany, with growth rates about, uh, above the na national average. Almost 100% of hospitals and practices use health IT. The National Health Telematics Platform as basic infrastructure for identification, security, and transport services will be operational early 2015. Theoretically, there are countless possibilities for the industry to develop applications. Um, we have many innovative projects and cooperation fostering interoperability between institutions and different vendor solutions. And last but not least, all stakeholders finally recognize the need for unified interoperability standards and the opportunities this would create. We hope that there will be an agreement on these standards the coming years. Learning from international experiences is important and the BVITG stimulates international exchange. Further, the government announced the eHealth Act for end of this year, which will certainly have an impact on the health IT landscape in Germany. It's just not yet known what this means exactly. And this is when I come to an end and would like Omar to take over for me um, the screen. Sure, no problem. Did you want to try to show your, your contact information or? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Oh, okay. For that. Yeah, they are right there. So if you have questions, and uh, please get in touch. Sebastian, thank you so much for the presentation. I will go ahead and take the rights back at this point.
and just I didn't get a chance because we went slightly out of order, but uh, here's uh, Mr. Sebastian Sills' contact information, or at least his title, Government Affairs and Strategic Networking, again, the German Association of Health IT Vendors. And uh, his presentation and all the presentations will be made available on our website uh, following the completion of this webinar. Thank you, Sebastian, again. Julia, is that computer behaving? It is. It is. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. Then let's go right ahead. Here we go. Um, coming your way. Good. Okay. Can you hear me and can you see my screen now? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So sorry again from my side for the technical hiccups. Thank you, Sebastian, for taking over. And um, yeah, this is just a proof for you to see that uh, it's actually a really live, um, a live webinar. So hello everybody uh, from my side also. Thank you for joining our webinar. Um, as said, I will talk about the growth market e-health in Germany. And I will start with an overview about the German healthcare market in general. And I will then speak about um, the potentials of e-health and focus on telemedicine and mHealth. If you um, look, look at um, healthcare systems around the world, the situation that they are currently facing is best described by, by the phrase, doing more with less. And this is very true in Germany as well. We have a growing number of patients, increasing costs, but at the same time, there's this high demand for efficiency. Everything has to work faster. Everybody has to be faster. Patients have to be at home faster from the hospital. Um, so, and this is really where the digitization of healthcare comes into play, because with the use of information and communi communication technology, we can enhance efficiency. But at the same time, we can maintain the high. Uh, quite high quality in healthcare provision. And I'm sure you've come across um, studies that show evidence that prove uh, these improvements. And um, I have here an example by the Fraunhofer Institute. They say that with the integrated digitization of data and procedures, saving of about 10 billion euro can be achieved per year. Germany's healthcare expenditure of 300 billion euro, um, which account for 11.3 percent of GDP, already show the great potential of e-health in Germany. Here are some facts and figures about Europe's largest healthcare market. Uh, we are a little over 80 million inhabitants, and the vast majority has health insurance. 70 million have a public uh, health insurance and 9 million uh, private health insurance. We have about 2,000 hospitals with more than 500,000 beds. And for those of you who are interested in the hospital system of Germany, here the ownership uh, of these hospitals. We have over 35% uh, private hospitals and we see these number, this number slightly increasing. If you are interested in more information, you can contact me. We have plenty of information about hospitals in Germany already at hand. So why are we facing these increasing demand for healthcare services? Well, we are an aging society. We are currently already the oldest population in Europe and the oldest population in the world right after Japan. And this is a very current situation and this will even even um, yeah, increase the number of people over 65 years of age or older will increase as you see here from the numbers. With that, of course, other challenges come along. The number of people with uh, with a care dependency will increase. And of course, we see more patients with chronic diseases. Fortunately, we do have um, outstanding preconditions for digital health in Germany. We have a lot of um, internet users, 77% of the population who are online on a regular base. We are the, um, the single largest software market in Europe and we also see the number of mobile devices increasing in Germany. So what really drives the development of digital healthcare solutions is the growing demand for healthcare services. Germany offers um, outstanding conditions for new products 
and solutions in healthcare industry due to its growing digital economy. And so um, steady growth of revenue is predicted both for e-health and telemedicine in Europe and in Germany. If you do research in, on how the market size uh, really looks like, you will come across a lot of yeah different data and this is because it is so difficult to clearly differentiate between terms like e-health, telemedicine, you know what is m-health and all the terms that are out there and um, at the same time it's so uh, difficult to quantify the market and the segment so this is why you will come come across different different data. I'm showing you here the data from the EU Commission. Um, they say that in Europe um, the e-health market will grow by 5% per year in the next years and telemedicine, the market for telemedicine will even grow faster by 10% per year. For Germany the picture looks like that. We have a current revenue for e-health um, of about 6.5 billion euro, a market growth of 10%, and here again um, telemedicine will grow faster by 20% per year. So let's take a closer look at telemedicine and where and how it is really um, in practice in Germany. If you want to find out um, about projects that are going on right now, um, I would recommend this homepage. It's the Deutsche Telemedizin Portal. It's a measure of the eHealth initiative of the Federal Ministry of Health. And its technical implementation is carried out by the Fraunhofer Institute Focus. And here you can find um, information about already implemented, but also ongoing telemedicine projects. And to see where they are located geographically, check out this home page where you can find the eHealth at Home map. It's an interactive map. If you go online and you click on the little houses, you find detailed information about the participating hospitals, institutes, and companies. And you also find information about the underlying business models. The next map shows you our dense network of certified stroke units. Um, these are the, um, the little red dots. But it also shows you that we have a dense network of telemedicine, of telestroke units. Because you might live in an area where there is no big hospital with the relevant experts or specialists and the stroke unit. So here telemedicine complements the high quality and um, uh, comprehensive medical care of stroke cases, for example in rural areas. I think this shows a really good example um, that the digitization of health is not only about gadgets that help you quantify yourself for health and fitness reasons or about cost-saving data management, but that it is really about um, saving lives, connecting patients and doctors, doctors and doctors, and so on. The other promising segment I want to talk about is mHealth or mobile health. 45% of the German population already use their mobile device for digital health purposes and remote monitoring is the key segment of mHealth in Germany. According to current forecasts, um, the German mHealth market will grow up to 3 billion euro in 2017. So far, mHealth solutions in Germany have been gaining great acceptance on the consumer level. The key hurdle um, for the integration into the professional field is the strict regulation of the German healthcare industry. And if mHealth is integrated into the professional, the, the primary healthcare um, sector, the market is set to, uh, to be advanced up to 4.2 billion euro by 2017. So, and last but not least, I would like to encourage you, if you are interested in expanding your business to Germany, come and visit, not only because of the nice beer, the beautiful landscapes, and the great cities, but uh, most importantly, come here and visit the trade shows. Meet your customers and partners, learn from the industry expert, and of course, gain new business perspectives um, at the trade show. Um, the one that you might already know is the world's largest medical marketplace. It's the Medica. It has 
um, two forums dedicated to the digitization in healthcare, the Health IT Forum and the Connected Healthcare Forum. And um, about the second one, the CONHID, you have already heard. So um, with that, I'll leave you with my contact uh, information. If you want more information or have questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. And with that, I will hand over to Omar again. Wonderful, Julia. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and take it back. Thank you so much for your presentation. I'm glad it worked uh, the second time around. Great. Um, the bios and the CVs of all the speakers will also be posted uh, on our website so that uh, we save a little bit of time. Our uh, last speaker, um, Mr. Brad Tridel, President and CEO of Vitaphone eHealth Solutions, and he'll give us uh, an overview of uh, how this company innovates across borders in, the Germany, in Germany and the United States. Brad, I hand you the virtual podium. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, can you hear me all right? hear you fine, and I see your presentation. Very good. It's all yours. All right. Well, I'm uh, honored to be uh, presenting with this panel today and appreciative of this uh, opportunity. Uh, I'm with uh, Vitaphone eHealth Solutions, which is uh, headquartered internationally uh, in Mannheim, Germany, which is about an hour south of Frankfurt, uh, about 30 minutes or so uh, outside of uh, Heidelberg. Um, many are familiar with the, the city of Mannheim, certainly within Germany. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about Vitaphone in, the, in general and uh, specifically what we've been doing in the United States. Uh, hopefully, you can advance my slides. There we go. So Vitaphone is actually part of a larger Vita Group house. And you see this house here. Uh, the Vita Group has uh, several different sister companies. Um, Vitaphone, you see on the right-hand side, and we'll talk more about that. In the center is Vita Public, which is actually based in Munich. Uh, Vita Public provides a variety of uh, online resources for both uh, physician and patient education, uh, including videos uh, that are educational in nature, as well as providing some um, marketing support for independent pharmacies. On the left side, you see Vita Liberty, which is also based in Mannheim, uh, which has been focused uh, largely on employer wellness, uh, a trend which is growing in Germany uh, just as it, as it is in the United States. In Germany, Vitaphone, outlined in a red box, is supported by both Vita Systems, you see down at the bottom left, which uh, provides development of both hardware and software, and Vita Services, which actually is uh, based in Chemnitz, Germany, which is the uh, a telemedicine service center. Many will, and I'll talk more about what a telemedicine service center is. Vitaphone at a glance, we were founded in 1999 uh, in Mannheim. Our CEO is Norbert Niederuk. Uh, Norbert has uh, a variety of experience with uh, international health IT firms, uh, such as GE Healthcare, uh, HP, and others, and we're certainly glad to have him as our leader. You see our core competencies include being a one-stop shop and service provider, healthcare management, telemonitoring, telemedicine devices, and patient coaching. And down at the bottom, you can see some of our credentials from a certification standpoint uh, and a quality standpoint. Our vision is we are an international company acting in a specific telemedicine market, and we'll get more into that. And as a team, we provide innovative solutions for improved patient outcomes in a changing healthcare environment. Some further dates uh, as well, a timeline here. Uh, we established cardiac event monitoring in the year 2000, and essentially that's, uh, especially in the United States, where a cardiologist often will prescribe a device to a patient uh, and that device will monitor the rhythm of the heart and transmit uh, that. And then uh, our, in, in our case, our telemedicine service centers are monitoring those rhythms, uh, engaging the patients as necessary to ascertain if there are symptoms, uh, and then providing reports to the cardiologist from which they can then make caring decisions. So that did lead to the establishment of the first uh, ever ISO certified telemedicine service center. Uh, which is uh, the Vita Services in Germany. And actually, we now have, uh, as I mentioned below, our own telemedicine service center based in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the United States with the U.S. market. We've also been a pioneer uh, on the device side um, in the uh, transmission of the EKG uh, over what was called UNTS. Uh, it's one of the 3G networks today, and that was back in uh, 2002. We had a patent and 
you'll see an announcement about that later in this presentation. Then we moved also into chronic disease management uh, and monitoring with uh, conditions such as hypertension, congestive heart failure, and COPD, which is a disease of the lung. And we've uh, done a variety of other programs as well. We also have been working on medication adherence with a device called the PICO, uh, which has been most actively sold in the Netherlands um, and won some design awards. And we continue to work on more innovation in medication adherence, uh, especially for the U.S. market. And the United States uh, operations were established in 2009, again, initially with cardiac event monitoring, which is what we do mostly today, uh, monitoring 750 to 800 patients a month, working with private cardiology practices throughout the United States, and now we're expanding with chronic disease management and medication adherence. Vitaphone has a history of innovation. As you can see here, the announcement in Business Week on the left side of our ECG transmission via 3G network. And on the right, these are some of our uh, more visibly known uh, pro programs and projects uh, in Germany uh, for chronic disease management, uh, especially relating to heart failure. The three segments really that we are focused on is cardiac ambulatory monitoring, chronic disease management, medication adherence management, and uh, all of these made possible by our telemedicine service centers. Again, the telemedicine service center is really a clinical call center that both monitors the biometric data, triaging and filtering these alerts as they arise, but also engaging and educating patients. So one of the biggest things in the telemedicine market today, especially remote patient monitoring, RPM, which is a, is a term commonly used in the US, is that uh, physicians and others are afraid of being overwhelmed with data. They don't want all of the data coming in from these devices because if they put it in their electronic health records, they have to look at it all. And the service that we offer, one of the services we offer, is to receive and triage those alerts, validate them, uh, engage the patients for the protocol, and uh, then, if necessary, engaging the providers. So it enables the providers to really do telemedicine without having to um, staff up and have all of the necessary um, time and resources on their side. Just a quick note as to really how we do this technically. Um, this is one of the examples. Uh, where we have devices uh, represented by the icons on the left, uh, starting at the top, ECG, second one down is a weight scale, often used for congestive heart failure uh, monitoring, and then a blood pressure monitor used for uh, both hypertension, congestive heart failure, and other conditions. Uh, you see the icon, which represents a drop. Uh, that includes a representation of pulse oximetry, uh, which is the oxygen level in the blood, uh, as well as the uh, diabetic monitoring, blood glucose, and we also do something called PPINR, or um, coagulation monitoring. And then at the bottom, you see the lungs, and that uh, represents spirometry uh, as well, or, or the ability to monitor for both COPD and asthma, uh, the ability for the patient to um, uh, to, to blow in the, the force of uh, the volume that they're blowing out from their lungs. These are transmitted, these devices, via wireless technology, which is mHealth, Bluetooth, or in some cases, infrared through these gateways that you see in the middle. Uh, all of these gateways are enabled by mobile technology, cellular technology. And uh, in the United States, we work at the bottom with an organization called TUNET. Otherwise, we do have our own proprietary gateways. And then transmitting that over the cell phone network to our own software, uh, such as the Remos Manager, our Vitabase suite of software. And also in the United States, we work closely with Qualcomm Life and their Healthy Circle software. Again, this is kind of our figure eight uh, for Vitaphone, which uh, as you can imagine on the right-hand side, in the United States we have both uh, physicians and nurse practitioners, which is a little less common, I think, in Germany, um, that would be entering uh, patients into our database. So you can see that the, um, the flow goes from the physician and nurse practitioner through the, kind of the gray arrow into our database. And from there, our telemedicine service center would engage those patients ensuring that they have the devices necessary that you see over on the left-hand side, but also, uh, say, every week doing a, a, a questionnaire about their health. Uh, how are you doing? Have you had any changes in your medication? Any changes to your health? Uh, and then often preceding, uh, if our, our clients uh, request this, with an educational session. So we do educational sessions specific to their conditions for hypertension or congestive heart failure, et cetera. And then all of this data, both the answers to the questions and the uh, device biometric data can be transmitted back into the database. And from there, we make reports 
can engage the providers, again, flowing back to the red arrow, to the providers if necessary. And the providers are still uh, the supervisors of the care uh, for those patients. So they then can make the therapy and medication changes, you see with the orange arrow there, such as, again, changing a medication, changing the dosage of a specific medication, perhaps bringing the patient into uh, their ambulatory center or their clinic instead of sending them to the hospital, which is very popular in that stage to reduce what's been known as readmission. In the U.S., uh, we have now just started bringing in our chronic disease management programs. Uh, one reason that I was very excited to work with Vitaphone is they have the history of doing it in Germany, what uh, we are now beginning to do in the United States. And I think that's a lesson for um, uh, many people in the U.S. There are now, I think we used to be afraid of, of seeking out solutions from other healthcare systems, um, but in this case, uh, it's directly applicable. Uh, so a little over a year ago, we did this pilot with some Peter Sinai affiliated cardiologists, a well-known hospital in the Beverly Hills, Los Angeles area, uh, called 30 Days to Make a Difference. And this was published in the HIMSS journal, and it showed how through just 30 days of engaging patients using our mHealth program, not only were we able to provide a great feedback loop to providers to make faster changes, changes that otherwise would have been made in maybe six months or a year's time, could be made in 30 days, uh, getting a newly diagnosed hypertensive patient on the right path faster, but also we were able to engage and educate those patients so that at the end of these 30 days, they felt better able to manage their conditions, something we call in the United States patient activation which ultimately is key. If we can get patients to start to take responsibility over the things over which they have control, uh, ultimately that will also lead to reduce uh, costs and higher quality in the patient experience, something we call the triple aim in the United States. So we're following up now uh, in the U.S. this hypertension program with uh, rolling out of our chronic disease management program in our suite of um, conditions such as congestive heart failure, COPD, uh, after that diabetes, and also post-surgery monitoring. So that's a snapshot of Vitaphone, an innovative firm from Germany that's uh, making great headway in the, in the U.S. market. Uh, and I'll turn it back over to you, Omar. Brad, thank you very much. I will go ahead and take them back. Okay. Really appreciate all three presenta presentations and presenters. All right, um, just before we do get into the Q&A, I wanted to ask one more poll question. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send that one around right now uh, so that my speakers can also get ready for the, um, for the final Q&A session, which will be a live interactive one. Um, really, this is just another uh, reminder of how German Nature Invest can help you access the German market, um, you know, kinds of information we can provide you. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, you'll find some answers there. And I apologize if, if there isn't uh, an appropriate answer that you're looking for, but I uh, would appreciate your feedback as well. Try to leave that up for a few more seconds and uh, ask my presenters to get ready for, um, for the Q&A. We have uh, quite a few questions already. Um, I'll go ahead and read them out loud and uh, just ask, uh, ask anyone to really take a stab at it. So I will go ahead and close the poll at this point. Thank you for your feedback. And let me go full screen here. Great. All right. Um, Thank you again, presenters. First question we oh sorry sorry sorry. First question we have um, is actually to Vita Phone. Um, what are the most promising developments in terms of market realization for future for the future? Okay. <laughs> Tough question. Uh, yes, I, I think uh, some of the great uh, developments that, that we have are applying. Uh, the remote patient monitoring technology to new markets. Um, and uh, I won't go into great detail there, but I think that um, there now is also a, a great movement, uh, at least in the United States, from what's known as fee-for-service, or paying every time a patient comes into a physician office or a hospital to what's called value-based programs, where um, providers will be reimbursed for greater management of the patient. Uh, so I think that, that that in general is pushing the, the market for telemedicine and patient monitoring forward. Uh, I also see us well positioned. Um, not only do we create our own cardiology devices, but we are also then device agnostic if it pertains to chronic disease management, which enables us to then become more of a solution provider 
Um, so we're able to work with a variety of companies that are creating these you know, really cool new devices, whether they are activity monitors, uh, weight scales, new types of blood pressure monitors, et cetera. We don't have to be the latest and greatest uh, in, in development of these devices ourselves. We can utilize the greatest developments of other companies. And, I, and maybe perhaps getting back to the questioner's point, um, we're seeing a tremendous amount of development of new devices. Um, there is what's called an X Prize out there today, where Qualcomm has put up $10 million for the development of a tricorder-like, for those who are Star Trek fans, uh, device that would be capable of diagnosing, I believe it's upward of 12 uh, conditions, it might be 16 conditions, um, non-invasively, uh, really, with the, with the patient. And uh, so the ability to leverage developments like that, I think, are exciting. Great. Thank you, Brad. Um, another question here for the panel. Um, what are the major hurdles for the German market, and how can I overcome them? Um, yeah, I, I can start on this. This is Julia speaking. Um, I think I've, um, I have briefly mentioned that regulation is um, the strict regulation of the healthcare market in Germany is, is the one thing. Um, if you have a product or a solution, you really have to start thinking about where do you want to focus. Is it the, in Germany we say the first or the second um, healthcare market, meaning um, the out-of-pocket market, the second one, the you know, or the primary healthcare. This is really where I would you know first start to really understand how both markets function, and then of course. Um, you have to understand how reimbursement um, functions in Germany. This is one field where we can help you guide, you know, guide you through the process, um, understanding what do my products need to fulfill to be reimbursed. Um, for example, if you have um, if you have a, a healthcare app or um, a device, um, you have to know is it a medical device? If it is. Um, under the um, European uh, law, it has to be CE marked. This is one one hurdle. Um, so it is quite a set of hurdles that you have to overtake um, um, to you know, step over. But as I said, um, we we can guide you through this and help you also connect to to be connected with the experts uh, in the industry. Yes. Uh, may Thank I, you, may Julia. I, may I add to that? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, so the Sebastian speaking, I think what you also might uh, need to consider is that the process of licensing um, software products or health IT products in general might take a long time. So you you have to, or you can expect five to ten years. To to be frankly speaking here, um, this is because of the system of self administration. So there's this body called Federal Joint Committee where physicians and hospitals and health insurance funds sit together and make decisions jointly. So you can imagine, as I mentioned earlier, um, they don't always have the same opinion on things and things might take a long time. So just be aware of that and um, follow Julia's adv advice and uh, get as much help as you can get because <laughs> it's really a jungle sometimes, um, the different regulations that are out there. Um, it's not impossible to master them for sure, um, and I think that GTAI um, is a really good resource for this, but yeah, be prepared. <laughs> Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you. Next, quest next question here. Um, do you or do we have information on how the spread of IT budgets are spread in terms of repair medicine? and preventative medicine. Anybody want to take a stab at that? Mm -hmm. IT budget in Germany spread across repair medicine and preventative medicine. Um, well, I don't have that at, you know, at hand at, at, the, at the moment, um, but um, as Omar said in, in the introduction, we do research uh, on different fields, and this is certainly one field that uh, we could do research on. and. Um, yeah, who, whoever uh, asked that question, we can, we can uh, yeah, talk about that in a follow-up and I can, I, I can find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll be happy to follow up post-webinar um, with, that, with that question as well. Mm -hmm. um, another question here, can German doctors get reimbursed for telemedical services? Any hope for more reimbursement in the future? Oh, that, that's a good one. Um, Sebastian, do you want to start on this? Do you? 
Well, I, I can start on this. Well, mm -hmm. um, generally, it's not allowed to treat for a for a physician to treat a patient they do not see. So somebody has mm -hmm. to be in the practice. Um, otherwise, it's not allowed to, or you cannot be reimbursed for that. Um, there are some business models that are out of the the healthcare system, really, um, like using apps, take pictures, and send them to a um, to a what is that term actually? Skin doctor, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so you pay for it out of pocket. But this is the the secondary market Julia mentioned earlier. You you wanna yeah. uh, com complement on that? Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, this is really a, a, another great hurdle. You know, how do the doctors? Uh, yeah, get paid for for telemedicine, and um, yeah, I know that um, like you know the, the politicians are working on this in Germany because they see that there's uh, the demand and the doctors. There are doctors that are really keen on on using telemedicine, right. but this is really their hurdle, so to say. You know, and I know that they are working on that law that. Um, prohibits them to to use telemedicine for diagnosis, and I think they did some readjustments um, a year ago, or started doing readjustments, saying that um, you you cannot exclusively um, treat patients over you know t um, um, IT wh whatever. Um, this is definitely a field that will that will ch there will be changes. Um, they're working on it. It's it's really strict in Germany, and but we see some movements, as I said before, and it might take a while, but um, there there will be adjustments. And I th I think also um, sorry to interrupt. No, you. Go ahead. Um, and I think also the potential really is um, is there for connecting physicians to actually exchange information and as mm -hmm. soon as the telematics right. infrastructure is in place this is a this is a huge market that can be developed and and there's you know a lot of companies are active in this already um, but I'd agree with Julia this this is really yeah tricky tricky <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe a slightly easier question which target groups um, are using mobile health or M health younger uh, or older generation mm-hmm Mm -hmm. I can start on this. This is um, um, this is a really um, interesting um, question because you might think that uh, only young people use uh, tablets and um, smartphones, but uh, we see that also the older generation um, is really interested interested in in these devices. It really depends on how the devices are. Um, how they look like, how how you, you know, how you can use them, you know, they have to be adjusted. But um, I would not say that only young people um, um, are using these uh, M Health solutions. And um, yeah, yeah, right. I, I have the chance to actually talk to uh, some app developers, and they're currently in a testing phase um, of their project. It's called Pain App, so it. Um, helps patients to, to keep a pain journal. And they said that their oldest tester is actually 94 years old, and she loves it. So um, I, I agree. You can't really make this division between old and young. Thank you. Um, another question here. Uh, what are main differences when launching a product in Germany versus US? I know maybe, Brad, you can highlight a little bit on that. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, I think one of the, the biggest things is the uh, FDA um, yeah. uh, that's required in the United States. And uh, you know, typically, if you're going to go into any other country, uh, they're going to look to your country of origin. Uh, where was this device developed? Where was the solution developed? Uh, and what kind of a certification did you receive there? Um, for example, if you go to South America and go to Brazil, they're going to say, well, were you initially, you know, if you're a German um, solution, did you get your CE certification first? Uh, so I think um, that's one of the things that, uh, again, a, a company, if you're in the U.S. looking to go to Germany, you need to look to your FDA first, uh, and then you can look at your CE. Uh, in some cases, you might be able to do it uh, somewhat in parallel, but uh, uh, and if you have your FDA, then certainly the CE will they'll say you must have CE then if you have FDA. Um, I think that the FDA, uh, from you know, the 
traditionally has been a little bit more onerous, a little more difficult perhaps than the CE certifications, but there's still a suite, uh, quite a suite of, uh, uh, of requirements uh, when going out to any one of these certifications. So I think that's, that's probably one of the, the, the uh, biggest differences. Um, also, I think it's been a, a surprise for me to see that uh, mainly because of health care reform in the United States, uh, and, and in my own personal opinion, the reform that would have occurred no matter which party would have pushed it forward was more towards a value-based reimbursement. And I think that this value-based reimbursement is uh, enabling um, a lot of uh, technologies to move forward more as tools uh, where you're looking for a return on investment for the use of the tool versus looking for a reimbursement for, for its, uh, its use. Um, and so I think um, this uh, you know, is, is something that is pushing a lot of technologies forward in the United States. I have not you know, seen, of course, the same thing yet happening in, in Germany, but there's still a lot of innovative solutions. A lot of what Vitaphone has done in the past is a program um, to pilot innovative solutions with a patient population that have been funded, you know, for example, by um, either a governmental program or a payer. Uh, so there are opportunities um, to do those as well in Germany. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brad. I, of course, had full faith in, 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 in knowing that you would be able to answer that question, so thank you. <laughs> we have time for one more question. I'm, I apologize if we have not been able to get to your question. We've been flooded with them, um, but I want to just take one more question um, for the sake of time, for, every, for everyone's time. Um, where do we see the biggest short and medium term um, market potential in Germany? Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess uh, that will be uh, that will be my question. Um, as uh, Sebastian already mentioned, um, this uh, this uh, yeah depends on when and how the the infrastructure, the the telemedicine infra infrastructure, is developed in in, in Germany, and um, this will really yeah really change the situation because. Um, more market opportunities will come forward. Um, I've told you in my presentation about the demand that we have, and um, well, on, on a short term, on a short term basis, I would really say it's um, like the small, smaller steps. This, this, you know, like M Health, the the field where the the, the customers really um, really pay for for the solutions because this is easier. But in the long term, the the goal that you know Sebastian showed you with the slide where everything is connected is really to connect not only little sectors but really the whole healthcare industry and this is the long time long time goal in Germany and this will also you know bring up new new potential for for business solutions to really connect the hospitals the patients and the doctors and the healthcare providers and um, yeah, I would I would say this is more on a long time on long time basis. Great. Well, at this point, I want to just thank our um, presenters, our speakers. We had an excellent panel. Thank you for the uh, for the discussion and for all the answers. Um, I have a collection of all the questions, and I'd be happy to individually answer them um, post webinar as well. So I, I can see who who posted the questions. Um, the presentations, the bios of our speakers will all be available on that website at the top, gti.com forward slash succeed in German healthcare. My contact information is on the screen right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day and uh, stay tuned for future webinars. And thank you to my speakers. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, John. Thank you.